like yes. Yes? Yes. If you were to rank albums by the number of times that I've listened to them over the years, the Yes album, Close to the Edge, Tales from Topographic Oceans, those would be in my top 500. Fragile would be in my top 40, maybe even my top 10. But only now am I about to experience Olias of Sun Hillo for the first time, not only entirely written and sung by John Anderson, but also entirely performed by him as well. I find that intriguing. Well, in my head, I'm hearing the layered vocal bits that appear on so many Yes tunes of the era, like I've Seen All Good People, or Side 2 from Tales from Topographic Oceans, The Remembering, Hi the Memory, that one. But honestly, my guess is the closest you'll find might be on Fragile, because to my knowledge, only Fragile has a collection of songs that were meant specifically to feature one member of the band, right? The Fish, Chandeliria Primatoris, for Chris Squire, Cans and Brahms for Rick Wakeman, 5% for Nothing for Bill Bruford, Mood for a Day for Steve Howe. Hey, Steve Howe, how's your cow? Well, uh, she mooed for a day, then she got the clap. And then the John Anderson feature, We Have Heaven with all of the layered tell the moon dog tell the marchist vocal bits going on, right? That's what I'm kind of expecting vocally. No clue what to expect instrumentally, though. I didn't even know John Anderson could play an instrument. But looking at the album credits, the thing I keep asking myself is, if he can play all these instruments, why didn't he whip any of this out for yes? I mean, see for yourself. Here's the list of instruments he's credited with on this album. Mini Moog, Korg Mini Korg Mark 1 and Mark 2, Farfisa Organ, Rhodes 66, Mellotron, Church Organ, Baldwin Baby Grand Piano, Freeman String Symphonizer, Martin and Gibson Acoustic Guitars, Gibson Melody Maker Electric Guitar, Hofner Violin Bass Guitars, Gibson Mandicello, Sitar, Tanpuri, Bozuki, Saz, Ludwig Woodblocks, Tambourine, Triangle, Custom Built Cymbal Tree, Assorted Cymbals and Gongs, Marimba, Toy Xylophone, Bells, Chinese Bells, African and cowbells, Tibetan bells, Irish harp, thumb piano, assorted African wooden flutes, drums, large brass band drum, brass band snare drum, Caribbean long drum, assorted Navajo drums, African skin drum, tabla, and glockenspiel. That's damn impressive, yes? Yes? Yes. And the thing is, some of these instruments are far and away from easy to just pick up and play. Just to be able to get a decent sound out of a tabla is impressive all by itself. And he's playing all of this? Like I said, intriguing. By the mid-70s, Yes was at the height of their popularity, and they decided to take a six-month break. It was decided that each member would do their own solo album. Drummer Alan White created one called Ramshackle. Steve Howe did one called Beginnings. Their new keyboardist, Patrick Moraz, did a rather eclectic one called The Story of I. And Chris Squire did what is considered by many to be the finest Yes solo album of them all, Fish Out of Water, one that we'll take a look at later in this season. John Anderson created Elias of Sun Hillow, which is the story of the ancient times about a group of people that leave their planet of Sun Hillow and travel across space to populate a new planet. And Elias is a magician who creates this flying device called the Morglade. It looks a bit like a Leonardo da Vinci sort of inspired flying machine. Before I get started, I want to bring up one small thing. It's the cover art. He worked with an artist by the name of David Fairbrother Rowe, who conjured up a rather Dean-esque cover, despite Dean not being involved. I think it has a little more intricate detail than a lot of Roger Dean's style, but it definitely harkens back to a style that you've seen before, I think. And this is, of course, the Elias symbol, which became associated with John very closely after this. It was even on stage during their 1991 Union tour. Can you tell that this says Elias of Sun Hillow? I mean, I'm not the best when it comes to graphic design, but every single person I've shown this album to has had to ask me, oh, what, what does that say? Gracious, I'm nitpicking and we haven't even started yet. Foreshadowing, maybe? You know what this music reminds me of? Cast your mind back to like the late 80s and early 90s. The music industry is still feeling the aftershocks of Paul Simon's Graceland album. World music has become 
enormously trendy. Like, no joke trendy. World music used to have its own section in Tower Records. Rock, jazz and blues, country and bluegrass, classical spoken word soundtracks, world music. Coincident with that, much children's programming had started to become more culturally diverse as well. Meaning that beyond just making sure that their cast members were of different backgrounds, the sets, the scenarios, and the music all started to diversify. The songs for these shows started to encompass more than just the great American songbook style that had been used for decades by folks like Fred Rogers and Sesame Street's Joe Raposo. It's you. I like it's not the things you wear. Can you summon to your mind the kind of music that started to show up in the kids' shows in the 90s? I don't mean the 30-minute Hasbro commercials that used to come on after school, but the music that was used by the shows on PBS and Nick Jr. Zaboomafu, Gullah Gullah Island, Dragon Tales, somewhere in there. Me and you and that vibe accounts for about half of what I'm getting from Olias of Sunhillo. The kinds of simple, happy songs that have tons of immaculately orchestrated layers of hand drums, pitch percussion, wooden flutes, ethnocentric strings, mountains of backing vocals all over like two chords. Two very simple chords. <laughs> so take all of that and mix it with some of the better late 70s, early 80s, new age, right? Especially some of the deeper and moodier pieces by Vangelis, like Opera Sauvage, or the soundtrack to Blade Runner. That combination is what Olias of Sunhillo sounds like to me so far. Part Lady Smith Black Mombazo, part Pure Moods. <laughs> the perfect soundtrack for your way of life. Vangelis actually auditioned for Yes. And at the time, his record company actually thought he played on this record. But in hindsight, there's really nothing on here that I think you could point to and say Vangelis absolutely did this. No, I think John played it all. And this is a weird musical space for me. Paradoxical even. Because what I'm hearing is overwhelmingly musically dense and simultaneously so light on compositional substance that it's almost transparent. This album from John Anderson could be considered one of the first new age records. The bombast and the technical virtuosity that you get out of a typical Yes album is not present here. Instead, this is more of a laid back affair. So getting into the songs themselves, meeting parentheses Garden of Gita, close parentheses slash sound out the galleon. <laughs> Most of the lyrics are flying right past me at first, right? Part of this, I'm sure, is the kind of angular verse that John Anderson is famous for. Part of it, though, is awkward phrasing, with the emphasis landing on the wrong syllable. I do like when the tune strips back to a kind of madrigal, sea shanty kind of a triplety thing for the second half of the song. Dance of the Reynard slash Olias, parentheses, build the Morglade, close parentheses. The man sure can punctuate his song titles. The first half sounds to me like music that's used to introduce the main character into the land of fairies that lies hidden at the bottom of his garden. But then the second half has the kind of rolling 6-8 sea shanty thing going on again. Mandolins and some kind of big lumbering bass sounding organ thing. Moon Ra slash chords slash song of the search. Here's what I'm hearing from this tune. The young ranger, having successfully traversed the treacherous caves of Nilhoglorn, emerges again into the sunshine and sees on the distant horizon the legendary jeweled walls of the city of Renaz. This does not actually describe what's happening in the song. But it could. To the runner. I can't prove it, but I'm 93% certain that this song is directly responsible for the creation of Rusted Root. I feel like I'm being overly critical on this album, but honestly I'm not trying to be. In fact, now that I've heard it all the way through once, I can say that the experience was a nice one, but I'm at a complete loss to point to any one moment as being the reason why I feel that way. I feel like all of the pieces tie together in such a way that it's almost impossible to listen to this record without listening to the whole thing. I can't really point out any one particular song that stands out. It all just flows together in such a natural way that it just feels like a continuum. It's lovely and imaginative and big and lush, but it's also compositionally flimsy and hard for my brain to grab hold of. I'm looking forward to hearing more though. That's got to be a good sign. Yes? Yes? Yes.
The more I listened to Elias of Sun Hillo over the week, the more I started thinking about Mike Oldfield's tubular bells. Mike Oldfield is credited, and rightly so, with creating a gigantic, sprawling, inventive piece of music all on his own. Though in truth, he did have some contributions from other artists during the recording process. But three years after the release of Tubular Bells, John Anderson also produced a gigantic, sprawling, inventive piece of music all on his own. For real. There was some speculation that John Anderson had some help when he made this record. And I think in hindsight, it's obvious he didn't. He did have an engineer that helped him record, but he played all the instruments on this record and spent a number of months getting to know them and playing them proficiently enough to be able to actually make this record. Once he felt he could, he embarked on recording it in his home studio, and it took about six months. He played every instrument, sang every note, and he did it in the days before sequencers, samplers, or digital audio workstations. That deserves credit. What we have here is just a really lush soundscape created in an era before digital cheesiness came along. I think it's the only one of John's solo albums that truly has an organic feel to it. There's a timeless quality to Elias of Sun Hillow. He also anticipated trends in both New Age and world music by many years, yet simultaneously produced works that are recognizable as being part of the YMU. Why am you? Yes, musical universe. But what helped me the most to get into this album was making the effort to understand the story it was telling. The story of a shipbuilder and a trek across space to a new home. It's not that it's a particularly original story and the four tribes aspect of it can be seen as problematic by today's standards. Plus, it can be pretty impenetrable at times. I mean, here's the verse that starts the whole thing off. Sound out the galleon to travel to cross. Close the space between pastures as rightly attained. As old stand to plunder, expectant as one dear companion can utter the right we achieve. I dare you to make less sense. But the mood it sets complements the music precisely the same way that a good soundtrack enhances the narrative of a film. And if you have a physical copy of the album, there's also supporting written material that gives the narrative some background. Because that's what Olias of Sun Hillo is at heart. It's an album of songs, sure, but it's also the soundtrack of a story that it contains within itself, a musical narrative tautology. It's also a reminder for me not to be so goddamn judgy at first. See, if we're doing straight reaction videos, just listening once and that's it, I'd probably never have listened to this album again. It's only after repeated listens that I've come to appreciate what John Anderson has accomplished here. If you enjoyed Elias, I'd check out this one as well. This is called Song of Seven. And it came out around, I think, 1979. It's John's second solo record. And this was shortly after the Tormato record and actually has some leftovers that didn't make Tormato. Although there's nothing really like this record. Nothing like Elias. Elias of Sun Hillo. It's a nice little movie for the mind, yes? Yes. Yes. (laughs) 